Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of AWS reInvent 2021. This is theCUBE, we go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise, we're here at a live event, hybrid event, two sets. We had two remote studios prior to the event, over a hundred interviews, really excited to have George Elisayos here, he's the Director of Product Management for EC2 Edge, really interesting topic at AWS. George, great, great to see you, thanks for coming on. Yeah, great to be here, thanks for so, having me. This, everybody's talking about Edge, IoT, EC2, what's the <laughs> scope of your portfolio, your responsibility? Yeah, well, our vision here at AWS is to really bring the power of the AWS platform wherever customers need it. AWS, wherever our customers want it, is, is our long-term vision. And we have a bunch of products in this space that help us do that and help us uh, um, uh, enable our customers whatever their use case is. So we have things like Wavelength, I know we talked about Wavelength before here in theCUBE, uh, where we bring um, full AWS services at the edge of the 5G network, so the 5G edge computing, in partnership with uh, uh, telcos worldwide, our partnership with Verizon in, in the US has been flourishing. We're up to, I think, 15 or more wavelength zones right now in, in many of the major cities in the US, uh, but also in, in Japan and Korea and in Europe with Vodafone. Um, so that's, that's one, uh, one of, the, uh, of the portfolio kind of offerings, and that helps you as a customer of AWS if you want to have the best latency to uh, mobile devices, whether they are sensors or you know, mobile phones or, or what have you. But we're also filling out that, that you know, edge portfolio with local zones. Uh, earlier today in Verna's keynote, we announced that we're going to launch another 30 local zones in 20 new countries, everywhere from South America, Africa, uh, Asia, Australia, and, and, and Europe, obviously, so a, a lot of expansion there. Um, uh, very excited about that. And that is kind of a similar offering, but um, it basically brings you, brings you clo closer to customers in metropolitan areas over the internet. So Wavelength's a big feature, George. I want to get on, just to touch on it, because I think latency comes up a lot in edge conversations. Low latency issues, whether it's cars, factories, you guys gave a demo yesterday to the press corps in the press room. I was there where you had someone in San Francisco from the opera and someone in person here in Vegas, and you had 13 milliseconds going back and forth demoing real time. Collaboration. The benefit of low latency in remotes. I mean, it's not, it wasn't next door, it was San Francisco. This is kind of the, the purpose of what Edge is about. Can you explain what that means, that demo, why it was important? and what we were trying to show and how does it mean yeah. to the edge? So there is, there is multiple use cases. One of them is human collaboration, right? Like uh, we've, we've spent the last two years of our lives over conferences and kind of like uh, teleconferences and, and trying to talk over each other and <laughs> unmute ourselves desperately. But <laughs> you know, uh, existing solutions kind of work generally for most of the things that we do. But when it comes to music collaboration where milliseconds matter, um, it's a lot harder for with existing solutions to, to get artists to collaborate when they're hundreds of miles away. L last night we saw a really uh, inspiring demo, I think, of how two top-tier musicians, one located in San Francisco and one located in Vegas, can collaborate you know, in, in opera, which is one of the most precise art forms in the music world. You know, there are no beats to, in opera to kind of like synchronize to, so you really need to play off each other, right? So, we provided um, a latency between them of less than 30 milliseconds, which translates, you know, if you're thinking about audio, if you're thinking about the speed of sound, that's, it, that's like being in the same stage. And they, they, you know, they, that was a very inspiring. But, but there's also a lot of use cases that are machine-to-machine -machine communications, where even lower latencies matter, and we can, you know, we can think of latencies down to one millisecond, like single-digit milliseconds when it comes to, for example, uh, vehicles, right, like, or, or robots, um, and things like that. So, you know, we're, we're, with our products, we're enabling customers to drive down that latency, but also the jitter, uh, which is the variation of latency. Especially in human communications, that is almost more important than latency itself. Uh, your mind can adapt to latency and you can start predicting yeah, what's going to exactly. happen, but if I keep changing that for you, that, that becomes even well, harder. Well, this is what I want to get to, because you got outcomes of applications like this Opera example. That's an application, I guess. So working backwards from the application, that's one thing, but now people are really starting to try to figure out what is the edge? Mm -hmm. So I have to ask you, what is AWS's edge? Is it outpost, wavelength? What do people buy to make the edge work? Well, for, for us, it's, it's providing a breadth of services that our customers can um, either use holistically or, to, or combine, be, be, combine multiple of those. So, 
you know, a really good example, for example, is this wireless. You are, I, I'm sure you know we're building with this uh, the first in the world uh, mobile network, 5G mobile network, re fully on cloud, right? So this combines outposts and combines local zones in order to, um, you know, to distribute the 5G network across nationwide, uh, and different parts of their applications live in different um, edges, right? Uh, the, the local zone, the outpost, and the, uh, and the region itself. So uh, we have other customers, you know, we, I, I talked about how local zones is going to be, you know, in, in total 45 cities in the world, right? We're already in 15 in the US, we're going to do another 30. Uh, but customers might still come and say, oh, why are you not, you know, in, a, um, uh, in Costa Rica? Well, we have outposts in Costa Rica, so you could build your own offering there, or you could you could build on top of outposts while you distribute the rest of your workload in existing AWS offerings. So, to answer your question, John, there is no single answer. It's I think that it is per use case and per workload that customers are going to uh, combine or choose which one of, of okay, these. Okay, so let's go through local zones. Explain what a local zone is real quick. I know we covered it a bit last year, it was a virtual event, but local zones are now part of the nomenclature of the AWS yes. language. We know what a region is. Right? right, so regions are regions. What's a local zone? We new regions and we new availability <laughs> zones and then we're, we're just <laughs> You got availability zones, yes. now you got local zones. Take us through the topology, if you will, of how to think about this. Right, so a local zone is a fully managed AWS infrastructure deployment, so it's owned and managed and operated by AWS. And because of that, it offers you the same elasticity and security and you know all of the goodies of the cloud. Um, but it's positioned closer to your end customers or to your own deployment. So it's positioned in a local uh, urban or metropolitan or you know, industrial center closer to you. So if you think about the US, for example, we have a few regions uh, you know, in the East Coast and the West Coast, but now we're basically extending these regions and we're bringing uh, more and more services to 15 cities. So if you are in Miami, you, there is a local zone there. If you are in LA, there's two local zones actually in LA. That enables customers to run two different types of workloads. One is this distributed cloud or distributed edge kind of workload that we've been hearing more and more about. Think of gaming, for example, right? Like we have customers that are um, like Supercell that are that need to be closer to the gamers uh, wherever they are. So they're going to be use, using a bunch of local zones to deploy. Um, and also we have these hyper-local uh, use cases where we're talking, for example, about Netflix that are enabling in LA their creative artists to connect um, locally and, pro and get like as low as uh, single, single millisecond latencies. So, so local zone is like an availability zone, but it's closer to you. It offers the same scalability, the same elasticity, the same security, and the same services as, uh, you know, as the AWS cloud. And it connects back to the regions to offer you the full breadth of the, of the, of the platform. So just to clarify, so the edge strategy essentially is to, to bring the cloud, AWS, the primitives, the APIs to where the customers are in instances where they either can't move or won't move Correct. their resources into the cloud or there's no connectivity. Right, there is, um, we, have, we have a bunch of use cases where customers either need to be there because of regulation or because of the, some data gravity, so data is being generated in a specific place and you need to, to locally process it, or we have customers in this distributed use case, but I think that you're pointing out a very important thing, which is a common factor across all these offerings. It's, it is the cloud. It's not like a copycat of the cloud. It's the same APIs, the same services that you already know and use, et cetera. Um, so extending the cloud rather than copying it around is our, is our vision. Uh, and, and getting those customers to, well, connectivity obviously needs to be there. Um, uh, we were offering AWS private 5G, we talked about it yesterday, but. Now, a premise that we've had is that a lot of edge use cases will uh, be driven by, by AI inferencing. And so, it, it, first of all, is that a reasonable premise? That's growing, we think, very quickly, and, and has huge potential. What does the compute, if that's a correct, correct premise, what does the compute look like for that? It is a correct workload? premise, and you know, that's why we think the, the model that we're offering is so powerful, because you have the edge and the cloud fully cooperating and being connected together. You know, the edge is a, is a resource that's more limited than, the, than the, the, the full cloud in the AWS region. So what, when you're doing inferencing, what you really want to do is you want to train your models back up in the region where you get most, most scalability and the best prices. You know, you have the, the scale of, the full scale of AWS. But for the latency sensitive parts of your applications, you want to push those to the edge. So when you're doing the actual inferencing, 
not the training of the models. Real time. Real yeah. time, you push that to, to the edge, whether, whether that's, you know, if your connectivity is 5G, you can push that into a wavelength zone. If your connectivity is wired, you can push it into a local zone. If you really need it to be in your data center, you can push it in your outposts. So you see how we're kind of like building out for all of those use cases. And, but in those instances, the, 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 I'm interested in what the compute looks like. It's, I presume it's got to be low power, low cost, super high performance. I mean, all of those things that are good well, for data-driven workloads. Right, the, the, power, the powerful thing here is that the, the same compute that you know and love in the cloud. So the same instant, EC2 instance types, the EBS volumes, the you know, S3 for storage, or you know, RDS for your, uh, for your database is an EMR clusters, you can use the same service and the compute is the same powerful all the way down from the hardware up to the service. And is the promise to customers that eventually those, uh, uh, it's not all of those services, right? I mean, you've got Outpost today, it continues to it's grow. It's continuing to grow, yeah. Right, so, but, but conceptually, as many services as you could possibly push to the edge, you intend to do so? Uh, it, we are pushing services uh, according to customer requests, but also there is a nuance here. The nuance is that you push down the services that are truly latency sensitive, yeah, right? Okay. You don't need to push everything down to the edge when you're talking about latency Like what's an example of what you wouldn't push down? Um, so management tools, right? Yeah, like, um, right. so when, when you're doing monitoring yeah, and management, management yeah, tools, yeah, you, yeah, you don't, don't, you don't right? need yeah. these to be at the edge. Right. You can do that and you can scale that or, you know, batch processing, it doesn't have to be at the edge because it's by definition not online, yeah, not like up. latency service. So we're keeping those, like AWS batch, for example, that's in the region because, you know, yeah. that's where customers really use it. Um, but things like EC2, um, you know, EBS, EMR, we're pushing, you, we're pushing those to the edge because th those are more. So. We've got two minutes left. I want to get the Outpost kind of update. Mm -hmm. um, I remember when Outpost launched, it was really in a seminal moment for reInvent hybrid. Oh, yeah. Andy Jassy said hybrid. Um, <laughs> I'll never say hybrid. Uh, but now hybrid's kind of translated into all cloud operations. Now you got local zones. A lot's changed from Amazon Web Services standpoint since Outpost launched. Local zones, things are happening, 5G, DISH. Now, what's the status of Outpost? Are you guys happy with it? What has it morphed into? Is it still the same game? What is Outpost today, vis-a-vis -vis what people may think it is or isn't? Yeah, we'll be, we've been focusing in what we're talking about, uh, building out the number of services that customers re uh, request, but also being in more and more places. So I think we're in more than 60 now countries with Outposts. Uh, we've, we've seen very good adoption, we've seen very good feedback. I've, you know, half of my EBCs have been on Outposts, but this year I think that one of the most exciting announcements was the Outpost servers, so the smaller uh, form factors that enable an additional uh, use cases, like for example retail, uh, or even building your 5G networks, uh, where you know one of our partners, Mavenir, is moving the 5G core, so the smarts of the network that does all the, the routing, on Outpost servers, and you know we can distribute those all over the place. So we're keeping on the innovation, we're keeping on the expansion, and we've been getting very good customer feedback. So all steam ahead, full steam ahead. Full steam ahead, plus 10%. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much, George. Really appreciate Great it. We're seeing see the you. cloud expand. The definition is growing, kind of like the universe, John. Dave Vellante for John Furrier. <laughs> You're watching theCUBE at AWS reInvent, the leader in high tech coverage globally. We'll be right back. <laughs>